Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Is our prayer at this time we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithe and our Sunday morning worship offering. You give as unto the Lord and God will bless you as you give to him. Amen? Amen. If you had not had an opportunity to pay your tithe, you may do so at this time. We can give online at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks or you can uh, scan the QR code, take you right to our giving page, the cash app. I might as well just take it off because it's still not working. I've already lodged my complaints with them, but whatever, it's not working. But most of all, let's give to God and may God bless you abundantly. Brother Jim, sir, please pray. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful morning, Lord. Allow each and every one of us to be able to come and hear your word. Please bless the gift and the giver as we give in your mighty and awesome name. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your giving. And may God bless you for it abundantly, and he will, because that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen? Amen. Be praying. Um, today is graduation day over there at Junction City High School. Caleb is graduating today. It's good to see Ruthie. And uh, also Vicki May is graduating today. So they're all doing their thing. They have to be at the schools. But you know what? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. But if they were here, I'd say congratulations, but they're not here, so I'm not going to say that. We already said it, though, right? You need to go back sure, make sure it is that. Thank you. I'd like to read to you three verses of Scripture this morning. How many love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Proverbs 17, verse 21. He that begetteth a fool doeth to a sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no joy. And then in Luke chapter 19, verse 40. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Then Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And I'd like to preach to you this morning for just a little while on the title of a message, Three Signs of a Spiritual Stroke. Three Signs of a Spiritual Stroke. Reverend Meyer, sir, please pray. a story about a woman who was attending a barbecue. She was there with some friends and family. And during this barbecue, she stumbled and she took a fall. And after the fall, she assured everyone that was there that she was fine. They had even offered to call the paramedics. They got her all cleaned up and they got her a new plate of food. And while she appeared a little shaken up, she continued enjoying herself. After the barbecue, the woman's husband called everyone, letting them know that he had taken his wife to the hospital. Later that evening, the woman had passed away. During the barbecue, the woman had a stroke. A neurologist said that if he can get to a stroke victim within three hours of the stroke, he can help them tremendously. And he said that there are three ways or three steps to recognizing a stroke. Number one, S, ask the individual to smile. Two, ask the person to talk and speak a simple, coherent sentence. Number three, 
asked a person to raise both their arms. And if a person has trouble with these things, you need to call for help. Now I realize today that I'm not a doctor. And I don't know there, all there is to know about strokes. But I want to take this today and apply it to our spiritual lives before God. And I'm going to tell you, as I said many, many times, the most important thing in our life should be our relationship with the Lord. And everything that we do, and the things that you accomplish, and the goals that you set, and the money that you earn, the number one thing is that I need to be right with God. It's the most important thing. Our desire should be, I have to make it to heaven regardless of the cost. As the song says, for above all else, I must be saved. As a pastor, I witness many things. I see a lot of different things. I preach. I teach. I exhort. I share. But many times we find that the message goes unheeded. In other words, people don't listen. Can I get a witness? You hear feedback like, well, that pastor is just too overbearing. It's impossible to live like that. I'm not going to have a man tell me what to do. Are you still with me? Oh, that's just old fashioned. God does not expect that of us now. But you know what? Regardless whether you want to listen to me or not, the Word of God is still true. God is still right. And God's way is still the right way. Can I get a witness? But if you allow me to apply these physical stroke signs to spiritual stroke signs, I believe that we can allow God to challenge us and we allow God to speak to us. How many want God to speak to you this morning? And the first one is, remember, you can't smile. Now, think about this. When we are suffering from a spiritual paralysis, we are unable to smile and have joy in our heart. Thank God that God can give us joy. Praise the Lord. I understand battles come our way. I understand trials come our way. Along with the rain also comes sunshine, right? I understand that as Christians, we don't always walk around with a goofy grin on our face. Not unless it's just your natural state of face, right? Some of us have that natural goofy face. We don't always walk around with these smiles. But I also understand that the God that saved us and the God that delivered us can give us a joy that is wonderful. Praise the Lord. It's a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. Bible said in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8, Whom having not seen, ye love. How many love the Lord? Though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You know what? We can still rejoice in God. But pastor, you don't understand. Everything is going wrong. God has everything in control. Can I get a witness? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Faith in Christ makes us a new creature. And instills within us a personal, living confidence. And inside of it, it produces a strong faith. And so when we have that faith in Christ, then it will produce a joy on the inside. And many times we have no joy. We don't have, now, happiness is different from joy. Happiness is caused by external things, correct? You find $100, happiness. Can anyone relate to that? I'm happy if I find $10. But joy comes from the inside. All right? Joy comes from the inside of us, from, from what we have in God. And we have faith in God, knowing that everything is going to be all right. It lets us know that, wait a minute, this is the day the Lord hath made, and in it I will rejoice. Everything might be going wrong round about me, but one thing I do know, I'm founded upon the rock, Christ Jesus, on the inside. I have faith in my God, even though I don't understand, because I know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. How many love God this morning? It's going to be all right. We realize that we have passed 
from life unto death. We were living in sin. We were living away from God. And we had no joy. We had, had nothing to look forward to. But now we realize that because of Christ on the inside, that we have passed from death to life. The Bible tells us in John chapter 5 and verse 24. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life we no longer have that death sentence hanging over our head because we came to God God saved us he forgave us he delivered us now we can say oh hallelujah I am now living in Jesus and Jesus gives me life he said, it shall not come into condemnation. The devil is the one that condemns. But in Christ we have life. And as you look at this, what a wonderful portion of scripture that we have. But whatever, whatever that it is, that prevents you from being happy and smiling, smiling for Jesus, needs to be cast down. Ever look at some people, man, they never look happy. I understand you don't have to walk around like that cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs guy. How many of you I'm talking about? The old commercials? Oh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. That sounds kind of good right now. We don't have to walk around like that all the time. But, you know, sometimes you ever see people, they're just like, Try to cheer them up. They don't even look. They won't, they won't even look at you because they're cast down. But I'm telling you what. Every once in a while, you know, you can crack a smile. Your face will not break. And really, we can have a good time living for God and having 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 that joy that the Lord produces. And the neurologist said that if he could help the stroke victim and if he could get to them soon enough, he could help them. Well, I want you to know we got somebody better than a neurologist. We have one called name and Doctor Jesus, the great physician that can help us if we want Him to help us. Now, God can do things for us if we allow Him to do so. And that's the whole thing about it is we don't allow Jesus to work and move in our lives. Correct? And everything that we have need of is found in Jesus, but we have to allow him to help us. You could go to the doctor and he said, I can help you. I can do this surgery or I can do this for you. But if you say no, he can't help you. But I'm glad that we say yes to the doctor. He helps us. And when we say yes to Jesus, Jesus can help us. Stop saying no to God. Jesus said in John 15 and 11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. He doesn't want us to live this life without any joy, but when we got Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Amen. Preacher, why are you yelling? Because I've got joy in the Lord. Wake some of you folks up this morning. Amen? He wants your joy to be full. God doesn't do it halfway. And here's the thing about it is, the things that we go through, we talked about it last couple weeks. God sees your sorrow. God sees your heartache. He sees when you're let down. He sees when things don't work out. He sees when you're disappointed. He sees that, that man. And here you are saying, man, what in the world is going on? And, and you're, you're disappointed. You're distressed. You're all these different emotions, these plethora of things going on in your mind. God sees every bit of it. And God knows what you're going through. John chapter 16 verse 22 tells us, And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I'll see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Praise God. That's good news this morning. The devil tries to come to snatch away your joy, snatch away your love, snatch away your happiness. But wait a minute. God says he sees and he knows he's not going to allow someone to take it away from us because our God is a good God. That means that we cannot allow any man, any devil, or the world to take away our joy. The question is, are you exhibiting the first sign of spiritual stroke? 
where you can't smile. I know things don't always work out. Hmm? It doesn't always work out for what we want. But where's our faith in God? Where's our trust in the Lord? And here we are, like, man, what am I going to do? Say, wait a minute. This I know. That my God is in control. My God knows exactly what's going on in my life. And God knows that, he'll, that he can give me the strength and he can, he can fortify me and he can help me. And I can still have joy if everything is going wrong. I know this is a hard thing to do, but this is where our faith in God comes into play. And even though our faith is attacked, maybe your faith is shattered. But wait a minute. I know that God is still. How many believe that God is still God? And that God's still sitting upon the throne. And that God is still in charge. So turn that frown into a smile and say, wait a minute, I refuse to be paralyzed by these things and the bad news of the devil. And I'm going to smile because I know my God is good. I know my God has delivered me. I know I'm in his hands. And I know that everything's going to be all right. Now it's easy to shout about Sunday morning, but what about when tomorrow morning comes around? Hmm? Let's go on. You can't smile. The second sign is you can't talk. Luke chapter 19, verse 40. And he answered and he said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Now, living for God over the years, you encounter many who cannot and who will not praise the Lord. Now, I find it strange. I find it unusual that when a professed born-again believer does not want to praise the Lord. Now, I understand sickness, right? I understand things like this where when you're sick, it's hard to praise God. Can I get a witness? When you just don't feel good, it's hard to praise God. But sometimes maybe that's when you should praise the Lord. But when... Seemingly, we're, we're okay. We're above ground and kicking. We not be, be kicking very high, but we're still kicking. Someone says, how's it going? Well, you know, sometimes people say, how goes the battle? How many heard that, right? What about how goes the victory? Why does it always have to be a battle? But anyway, and, and uh, you think about movie stars. You think about baseball stars, athletes, and football I mean, people go crazy for these folks. What's your name? That's married to Kelsey, or not married to him, but Taylor Swift. Any Taylor Swift fans? If you are, it's okay. Big old guy here, Taylor Swift. It's all right if you like Taylor Swift. I, I don't. I don't know even what she sings. All right, I just. Not, I don't know. But people go crazy for these folks. Do you know that Taylor Swift is a billionaire? I didn't know she was a billionaire. Wow. But anyhow, people, people go crazy for her. That's their prerogative. I don't care. I'm not saying that's bad if that's what you want to do. What about Patrick Mahomes? How many like him? One person. Well, you guys, do y'all like anybody? <laughs> wow. Let me think of somebody else. I can't think of nobody else. Who else? Who? <laughs> yeah, who, who? For Brett. The thing about it is, what, uh, I know, uh, I'll leave politics out of it. All right, so, people get, I don't, get, get excited for whoever you want to get excited for. And they, and they come out there on stage, or, or they go out there in their political arenas, and, and people are like, ah! And they're going crazy over a man. But when they come to the house of the Lord, they're like petrified statues. Hello now. And you don't say nothing. But what about, what about, I mean, people even get excited at amusement parks. They scream and get loud. Why can't we get excited for the Lord and lift up the name of Jesus, the one that has saved us from a burning hell? I understand sometimes you can't, maybe physical limitations, I understand all that. But when we have every moving part in our body, we should be able to praise our God. Amen. And if you can't praise the Lord, I'd venture to say something is wrong. 
Many times the way that we worship God and the way that we praise him is an indicator of our spiritual temperature. Again, we go through battles, we go through situations and things happen. I understand all that, right? But when we're talking about over a course of time when you can't praise God, you can't lift your voice unto God, you don't even move, not even a minuscule muscle. Wait a minute, something is wrong. And just as a stroke causes us to be paralyzed and unable to speak, and so it is with sin. Sin is a hard taskmaster. And sin will weigh you down. And sin will make it to where you can't praise the Lord. And when your heart and your life are gripped by sin, you find it hard to pray. You find out hard to worship our God. Oh, but the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. I praise him for what he's done in my life. And when you realize, when you come to that realization of what God has done for you, you'll find it hard not to say anything about it. People can now, now again, you can like whomever you like. That's your prerogative. But you know what? Why can't we have the same exuberance living for God? Amen. That's all I'm saying. The prophet Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. He said, Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. Jeremiah was a lot like Christians today. Many blame God for the insults. The physical sufferings, the things that come their way. And people will say things and they will insult you for being a Christian. That's all right. They crucified Jesus. We get all bent out of shape because someone calls us the Jesus freak. Well, I'd rather be a freak for Jesus than a freak for the devil. Amen. Jeremiah had been beat. He'd been put in the stocks all night long. He'd been mocked by the multitude. And to Jeremiah, it seemed that he was an utter failure. And his labor was in vain. So he's like a lot of us. We get discouraged. And he determined, I'm not going to speak the word of the Lord. I'm just going to shut up. I'm not going to say anything. Fine. And he was having a pity party. How many of you ever had a pity party? I didn't even know. And, 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 and I like it, Jesus, like the preacher said to do. And I did it, and everything going wrong. They feel sorry for me. Lick your wounds. Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? I gave my life to God. It was good for three days, but after that, I'm just going to pout. How many have ever been that way? I don't want to know. And we get to feel sorry for ourselves. See, I gave my life to God, and everything is going wrong. <laughs> you don't think the devil's going to take it laying down, do you? I ain't going to do nothing. I ain't going to go to church. I ain't going to do nothing. When I get there, I ain't going to clap. I ain't going to raise my hands. I ain't going to do nothing but sit there. Bless me if you can, God. Well, you probably ain't going to get nothing. You understand those words, right? So Jeremiah said, I'm a failure. I got discouraged. But he said, but his word was in my heart. As a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. In other words, he said, I'm not going to say nothing. But God's word was on the inside of his heart. He said, man, I can't keep it to myself. I've got to say something. And that's the way that it is in our life. God has saved us. God's delivered us. And now we know the love of God is in there. I just can't stay shut up. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. And Jeremiah refused to be struck with a spirit spiritual stroke, uh, regardless of the battles, uh, regardless of the situation, regardless of what people say, I am going to praise the Lord. Uh, how many are going to praise the Lord with me this morning? We have to come to the place when we find ourselves stricken. We're not praising the Lord and we're, we're stricken with these things in our life. You have to do something about it. And, and the easy thing to do is just to stop. See, I need, I need to take a break. Really? I need some me time. 
Well, you don't need me time. You need some knee time. You need to pray. And so the devil says, well, you just need to take a, take a break from God. How can you take a break from God? And so when we realize that you feel yourself kind of like being drifting away, you need to get up and do something about it. Listen to what his wonderful word says in Hebrews 13 and 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Continually. I don't feel like it. Do you know that we are not saved or kept by our feelings? Feelings will lead you astray. We are saved and kept by faith. Faith in God, faith in his word, faith in his promises. And so we say, wait a minute, to how can I combat these things rather than, than allowing these things to run through your mind over and over and over? Why don't you begin to open up your mouth and sing praises to God? Thank God with the praises of your lips, giving thanks unto him. God, I thank you. I praise you. I give you glory. And before long, that frown will turn into a smile. And before long, that weariness on the inside turns into joy and you can say praise the Lord I'm going to give thanks to his mighty name how do we prevent a spiritual stroke by offering the sacrifice of praise to God continually and we need to let the power of the Holy Ghost burn in our hearts and let his praises ring forth can someone say amen to that amen. you can't smile you can't talk you can't raise your arms. Psalm 63 and 4. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Amen. Psalm 134 verse 2. He said, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Can we lift up our hands and give praise to the Lord? Amen. Lamentations. Chapter 3, verse 41. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. Uh, you know what? We can raise our hands to the Lord. And then Hebrews 12 and 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Throughout the word of God, we find many places where we are instructed to lift our hands to God. The questions that I wish to pose are these. How many times do we lift our hands, but we really don't mean it in a worship to our God? We start our services out, we lift up our hands. Well, how many times do we just lift up our hands just to do it? When I first went to church as a young GI, and I was there, and uh, the church that I used to go to, we didn't lift up our hands. We didn't do anything out of order there. And the man told me, he said, uh, I'm there, and uh, we start the service. He said, just do what I do. Okay. And they started the service. They put their hands up in the air. I'm like, oh, boy. I put my hands up in the air. Were you praying? Nope. I was looking around. Oh, my goodness. I'm in one of these holy roller churches. I mean, what I'm talking about. I was looking around. And then they started to sing. Okay, I can sing. But they started to clap their hands with it. Well, where I came from, we didn't clap our hands in church. Man, we would have clapped our hands in there. They would look at us like we were demon possessed or something. And so they started, and they're clapping their hands. I'm, and he's like, I'm like, I don't know what I was doing. But then when I got saved, it was not hard to lift up my hands. When I got saved, it was not hard to clap my hands. Amen? Amen. What about the times when we do not lift our hands? All right, so I know there might be times when you don't lift up your hands. And we're not throwing stones, right? But why do you find it hard to lift your hands and your arms to the Lord? Okay, maybe every time you don't do it, all right, fine, your prerogative. But man, every once in a while is good, right? 
Why do we find it hard to praise our God? Has your spiritual stroke progressed to a stage where you can't lift your hands anymore? Have the symptoms already taken over your life? How many remember when you first got saved? Man, there was nothing that you wouldn't do for God. But now, we find these simple things hard to do. Have the symptoms taken over your life. Some do not and cannot lift their hands in his sanctuary to bless his holy name. It's not hard to praise God when God's number one in your life. There's a very familiar verse of scripture that we've used, and most of us have heard it many times, in 1 Timothy 2 and 8. He said, I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. This is why we lift our hands. You ever wonder why we come to church and why we lift our hands? This is why these verses of scripture. We can quote these things, but do we fulfill it? It was common among the Jews to lift up their hands in prayer. And it was their way of making entreaty or request to God. And this was done without wrath or hatred toward any person. It was done without an unforgiving spirit or without reasonings or disputings with, with, within over what was being prayed for. We just submitted ourselves to God and that's what we need to do. And, and a lot of people do not and will not raise their hands. Will it keep me from going to heaven? I didn't say that. Okay, please take it in the right way. Many times people cannot raise their hands because they have been afflicted with hatred and wrath toward others. We cannot have hatred and wrath in our hearts. And if there is, we need, to, we need to lay it down and let God take it away from us. But you have to be willing to let go of it. Yes. See, God, God wants to take things from us and God wants to replace it. But again, as I said earlier, we have to allow God to do this. And sometimes it's like a kid. You ever get a kid with a toy? Hey, let me have it. No, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. And try to get away from them, they will fight you tooth and nail. Give it to me. Give it to me right now, or I will. No. How many know what I'm talking about? No, it's mine. And that's how people are with their hatred. It's mine. I'm going to hold on to it. Let it go. And let God be real to you. They do not have a forgiving spirit. You know, let me tell you something. People are going to do you wrong. I don't care. And how many times have we done wrong to people? All of us are guilty. We've all done wrong, but we need to learn to forgive. All right? And so we have to have an humble spirit before the Lord. And we have to forgive. If you want to go to heaven, you need to have a spirit of humility. If you're afflicted with these things, you need to seek God. And let God do something for you. Maybe you came in here today, your hands are weighed down with sin or an unforgiving spirit. All right, come to God and let God take it away. And now you have a freedom and a liberty where you can lift your hands to God and say, God, thank you. Thank you for helping me today. There's a lot of things that I could add to this message possibly. But the bottom line is, how is our relationship with God? Some cannot smile, they cannot talk, they cannot raise their hands because they're too filled with the things of this world. Today, why don't you let it be a day of liberation for you? So what is a stroke? What is a stroke? A stroke is a sudden death of brain cells due to the problem with the blood supply. And when the blood flow to the brain is impaired, oxygen, and important nutrients cannot be delivered. The result is abnormal brain function. Blood flow to the brain can be disrupted by either a blockage or a rupture of an artery to the brain. What is a spiritual stroke? A spiritual stroke is the sudden death of your inner spiritual being due to a problem of not allowing the blood of Jesus to flow in your life. When the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus is impaired or blocked due to the love of the world, the fruit of the Spirit cannot be delivered. 
The result is abnormal spiritual brain and heart function. The blood flow to the brain and the heart can be disrupted by a blockage of sin, rebellion, and disobedience. The result, you cannot smile, talk, or raise your hands. Spiritual stroke. But thanks be to God, there's help today. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord.